So give you an update on how the things we did this spring have turned out. Stay tuned. The first one is pruning black raspberry. Let's see some results. Spring grafting? Well, what you didn't see, the nursery and what not to do. Magic potato bed prep. Wow. It's not magic potatoes, but it's the prep. Let's see the results. Roller crimping. Wow. The best technique we've learned in the last five years. Aphids. Ha <laughs> ha. Something new. Let's start with how to prune and multiply black raspberry and let's look at results. The birds have been at some of them. Jewel black raspberry. And look at these new canes. There's the nursery, <laughs> and there's what it should be. The nursery. So here's how it looked <laughs> not long ago. It really got away from us. And so last week, uh, or two weeks ago with Giselle, we did a round of weeding. And that got weeded out the nursery. Still a few plants have kicked in. So Melody is here for a few weeks. Say hi, Melody. Hi. She's here from France. Uh, so do some weeding. And then got a load of mulch. So we'll re-mulch uh, the nursery after this weeding. So this is kind of how we want it to look. It's been great weeded. And at the same time, we removed the elastics. So you see that one has just got the parafilm. We leave the elastics on the one that didn't take because it doesn't matter. We'll cut that off eventually. And so we're going along and all the ones that have taken, we take off the elastics. Do you have one you can show how to take it off? It's not that complicated. So there's one that took really well so we just undo the knot the same way and opposite of what we did you can also cut them so and then just undo them unroll them so it prevents them from getting a little bit strangled because as they want to grow that elastic really holds them and that's it don't throw them away just put them throw them away but don't throw them on the ground and that's it so see here look that that grew okay that's not great growth for a first year graft but because they were completely buried under the mall under the weeds uh it's what happens a lot of things going on and not everything gets looked at at the proper time so here's some examples see that one took and nice shoot grown from there they don't have to grown a huge amount but just as long as they're alive, that's what we look for in the first season. Not a huge success in the grafts. I don't think we got maybe 20%. You know, we'd have to count them about 20%. So that's not great. Uh, but we got some trees going spring grafting. It's a bit of an update to that spring grafting technique and we'll see how it turns out. I certainly like doing August and September bud grafting. They seem to they seem to have gotten much better success with those. Practice, practice, practice. We got to practice more. And the second update was the potatoes. So maybe you remember the potato bed that we did this spring and we are doing it from here this is the end that we put a lot of hay and not much and no cardboard so here's potatoes they're doing very nice but a lot of grass came through and here was the part where we had put cardboard 
Also potatoes doing very nice, but a lot less grass. Pretty conclusive that <laughs> having a, a barrier like cardboard or paper helps a lot when you're going to do a mulch layer. Anxious for the potatoes. So the potatoes done really, really well in this mulch. So what we did was we came through one time. We did a one round of weeding and we added some mulch. So this half has had mulch added. Look how deep that is. I mean, there's a there's about a foot or 30 centimeters of mulch on there. And the potatoes are looking really good. I haven't seen any potato bugs, potato beetles, although I did see some leaves eaten, but it's not just potato beetles that eat them. I mean, these potatoes are really happy, really happy. They're getting some irrigation. It's mainly quack that is invading. So see, this is quack grass. Some of you say, oh, we got these kikuyu and different things. Listen, we got quack grass. Take a look at how this grows. If you don't know about quack grass, well, quack grass will actually grow right through potatoes. I've harvested potatoes with the quack root right through it. Uh, I broke them. It's too dry right now. I had shut off the irrigation for a bit so we could dry out the weeds around the nursery. And the quack has gotten a little stiff. So here's how we end up getting some of the, the quack in among the potatoes. So we usually just fish down a little bit and some of these were just broken off. Some were actually pulled. Most of these are just being pulled. So we'll do another quick weeding in here before laying more mulch. So as I say, that side had mulch and this side didn't have added mulch. So you see that this is about the line where there was cardboard. Let me show you if there is any remnants. No, there was no cardboard here, not a trace of it left. I know that here there would be cardboard. There would have been, unless it's... Oh, there you see. So there's some of the cardboard remaining. Not much, you see. Cardboard and then here's the soil already. So the cardboard has degraded well and its role was to basically keep some of this quack at bay a little bit. And so it's done its job more or less. Some of the quack has grown through it. So yeah, that soil is dry. All right, we'll do the weeding, do the mulching and then Turn these irrigation, this whole line of irrigation on, and these potatoes should be doing really well, really well. Let's see if we can find a few that are in there started. Here's one. Is that is that a new one or is that a gra? Is that the? Oh yeah, that's a new one. So you see how. They basically are growing on the soil, under the mulch. Just cover that up again. Yeah, that's well, maybe not pretty hard. Hard to tell. This one doesn't quite look fresh, but it doesn't look like it's been used up. Usually they'd be pretty deflated if they were, if they were from the, the ones we planted in the spring. Quick update to the potato planting method so got about a wheelbarrow of potatoes from there maybe 50 pounds so more than that's more than 50 pounds that's more like 70 pounds so it worked the fourth update to the video is on the mow and blow versus chop and drop versus roller printing we're just going to look at roller printing so in the last couple of years this has become the go-to method in the summer when the grass is tall enough and the stems become bendable. So we go through the orchard on a first pass roller crimping with tall grass and there you see 
how it looks after it's been rolled once. Then we come through a second time, just because there isn't enough weight, I think, on the roller crimper. So we do a second pass, and then that really lays it down. And it's done tremendous in keeping humidity and moisture in the orchard. The next one is on aphids. Aphids <laughs> on our apple tree. Look at this. You wonder why there's aphids. Well, let's just say that this tree is stressed. The aphids are just here to finish up the job. The job started by the black walnut trees. Now this one apple tree is situated right between two black walnut trees that you see. And so it's really on decline and the aphids are attracted to finish that job. Also, it's on the most vigorous growth. Look at how much this tree, these, these have grown. Never seen aphids like that on this one. So there is an update to the aphid video. Aphids, aphids, aphids on a dying tree. Thanks for watching. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard. Have trees already? Pruningcourse.com. Subscribe, please. Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Bye. The first one's pruning class, we're going to see some results. Spring wrapping, well, we didn't see the nursery, we got nothing to do. Magic, potato, pet trap, wow. Somebody can get a place of trap, let's see results. Roller gripping, wow, the best technique we learned in the last five years. Aphids, ah, something new.